Well, for those of you who have never encountered Dexter, um, count your blessings. Uh, but he's a, uh, he's a very nice man. Uh, he's the ideal co-worker. Uh, he's the kind of guy who always brings little uh, snacks and pasties and so on in for his co-workers. Um, he's a wonderful boyfriend uh, for his girlfriend, not generically speaking. Um, and a really sweet all-around guy. And if every now and then he just sneaks off and kills someone, nobody's perfect. Uh, but Dexter comes very close. Uh, in his job, he's a blood spatter analyst for the Miami Police Department, which allows him to do good work and at the same time keep track of people who might have slipped through the justice system, uh, because that's his parview, or is it purview? Anyway, it's what he is interested in. Well, as I said, Dexter really is a very nice man, but he does have a dark side, uh, which he refers to as his dark passenger. And every now and then, the dark passenger takes the steering wheel and drives. And Dexter finds himself on one of his nights of uh, wild joy, uh, in which he goes out and finds someone who really, really, really deserves to die. And Dexter helps them fulfill that destiny. Um, this is because he was raised by a foster father who was a policeman, a somewhat embittered policeman, who realized that Dexter had the innate urge to kill, there's nothing he can do about that. So he helped Dexter channel it for the good of society. Um, if you watch the evening news at all, you'll realize there are lots of people we all agree um, should probably be helped along to another dimension. Uh, Dexter helps those people find their way. That's his job. The story I like to tell, which unfortunately is true, is that I was asked by a, a local businessman's group to give a little talk at their luncheon about the importance of the arts and you know how if you don't read a book now and then you turn into a turnip um, and as I was sitting at the head table preparing to speak I looked out into this room full of uh, energetic businessmen and they were you know smiling at each other though they clearly didn't mean it and shaking hands and congratulating each other on various business coups and exchanging cards and chewing with their mouths open and the idea just popped into my head that uh, serial murder isn't always a, a bad thing. And I started taking notes on the little napkins at the table. And when I went home, and I don't remember what I said for my speech, but I went home with a little pile of napkins and pretty much the outline for Darkly Dreaming Dexter. Um, that's where the idea came from. One of the things that really surprised me was um, First of all, the success of the books, quite frankly. It's not that I, I, I'm telling you they're lousy, because they're not. But um, I just didn't think that anyone would actually like a serial killer. And I did try to make him lovable. And I was shocked that I succeeded. And the first meeting I had with the marketing people at the publishers was sort of overwhelming, because all these middle-aged women would take me to a side and say, I shouldn't say this, but I have such a crush on Dexter. And this has continued, I think, with the uh, television series, that people genuinely like the character, which I think says some things about the human spirit that are not necessarily flattering. Um, there's a little Dexter in all of us, and that's a little bit unnerving. But I find now that people like the character um, more than they like the books, or certainly more than they like me. And uh, he's become sort of an independent life of his own, which is somewhat unnerving. And as his father, I just want to remind him that he really needs to behave. I was in Italy recently, and I was at a very large press conference, and the first question they asked me was, Mr. Lindsay, what is it like to finally achieve a success now that you are so old. And because the man was at the back of the room, I couldn't hit him. Um, so I had to think about that. And I, I feel like um, the whole Dexter success has surprised me. And I do take it one book at a time. I don't have plotted out the next 12 books. Uh, all I can say is that when I was an actor um, in Hollywood, and not a very successful actor, of course, or I'd be doing that, it's easier. 
Um, but I was in a training program, the New Talent Development Program at one of the studios. And what they drummed into our heads then was that if you're lucky enough to get a part on a situation comedy, a television show where you have three or four lines every week as the goofy neighbor or something like that, you've achieved success because people like you. People like what you're doing and you're being paid for it. And to a certain extent, I feel like that about Dexter. I'm still overwhelmed at the fact that people like him. And I do feel an obligation to keep doing it as long as people do like it. So when they say what's next for Dexter, all I can really say is more. <laughs>